for many of our courses which involve the use of large data sets or the Linux environment, rather than trying to set uh, that environment up on people's own machines, uh, we make use of cloud computing, which allows us to set up a server which holds both the data and software which we're going to uh, use in the course, and then let people connect to that in order to be able to access it and therefore perform the exercises. What I'm going to do in this video is to do a walkthrough to show you how to use the information that we send out prior to the course to be able to make a connection to a cloud server, uh, which would be the same thing that you would do when you're actually performing exercises on the course. This video is going to be for people who are Mac users, so it's going to be run on Mac OS. If you are a Windows user, uh, then there is an equivalent video also on our channel. So if you just switch across to the other video, uh, which should be next to this one, uh, that will be more appropriate uh, to walk you through the same process on Windows. I'm going to do this on uh, Mac OS. Uh, so if I switch across to my Mac, then you should be able to see my desktop. So we will have sent out a couple of bits of information in advance of the course. One of these will be a zip file for you to download containing all of the course data. Um, I've uncompressed a file here into my data drive, but it doesn't really matter where you've put it. But if I have a look in my data drive, I've got a folder called course data. And whatever folder we've uh, sent you that you've uncompressed, it will have lots of data in. Mine's only got one file, but yours will probably have several pieces of information in there, but one of the files that's in there will be the PEM file, and the PEM file is the one that is the authentication key that allows you to connect to the cloud server to perform all of the exercises that we're going to do uh, in Linux. To make it a little bit easier to find this file when we make the connection, then the first thing I'm going to do is to copy this file uh, from wherever we've uncompressed the course data onto my desktop. Now, just to make note, the file that you receive from us may not be called babramcourse.pem. It may have a different name, probably one specific for the course that you're on, uh, but it will definitely have a .pem extension. Okay, so that's the important thing, and there'll only be one of those in the data that we send you. I'm going to grab this file and just copy it onto my desktop you'll see that it actually turns into a little picture of a certificate, okay? because that's what um, it is. Ultimately, it's uh, an authentication certificate. And then if I close this down, we can actually make the connection. Now, the connection to the cloud server is going to use another piece of software, but it's software that's installed by default on Mac OS, so we don't need to install anything. And the program that we're going to use is going to be called the terminal program, uh, which is a command line uh, interface to the operating system. Um, to launch this, I can just um, launch Spotlight. And then if I just start typing in terminal, it will find the app and I can just press return to launch it. Okay, and I should see something that looks like this. Okay, if I just make this a little bit larger, it'll make our life easier. The first thing I'm going to need to do in terminal is to find the PEM file that I've just saved to my desktop. When I first start the terminal, uh, I will start in my home directory. So I need to move from my home directory to the desktop. The desktop is just a folder contained inside the home directory. So to move from the home directory to the desktop, inside terminal, I need to type CD, then space, and then desktop with a capital D and press enter. That should now move me to the desktop. And if I see desktop here in my prompt, then I know that that's worked. Just to be sure, I also want to um, check that I can definitely see the PEM file that I copied before. And the easiest way to do that is just to try and list the files here, but I'm just going to list the PEM file specifically. So if I type ls space, and then whatever the name of my pen file, pen file is. So in my case, it's babramcourse.pem, but replace this with whatever it is that yours is called. 
And again, as long as I see the same name returned back to me underneath, then I know that's worked. Before I can actually use this pen file to make a connection, there's one other thing that I need to change. Uh, there is quite a strict requirement by uh, the program that we use to connect to the remote servers that the key file, this pen file, um, should not be able to be read by anyone on your machine except you. So before it uses it, it checks the permissions on the file to check that you are the only person who can read it. And that probably won't be set correctly when you get the file out of the zip file initially. So before we can use this, we need to change the permissions on the file so that only we can read it. The command to do that is ch mod space and then 600 and then the name of the pem file which again on my case was babramcourse.pem but will be whatever the name of your file is okay and this will change the permissions on the file so that we have read permissions and no one else can do anything with it okay once we've done that now we can actually use the pem file to connect to the server I said that we'd send out a couple of bits of information prior to the course. One will be the data to download. The other will be the um, address of the server that we want you to connect to. Um, so this will be what's called an IP address. Uh, and an IP address is just a set of four numbers separated by dots. So the one I'm going to use today is 35.176. 219.60. Um, you might find that for your test server, it's the same number as that. More likely, it will be a different number. But again, we will have sent that out to you in advance of the course. So you should know what that is. Let's construct the command we're going to use to connect the server then. So the command is going to be SSH. SSH is the program that actually initiates the connection. Minus I then allows us to specify the key file that we want to use. So that's going to be babramcourse.pem. Then we need to say which user we want to be on the remote server. And this will always be EC2 hyphen user. So EC2 is the Amazon web service standard user. So all of the their images will use this same new username. And then finally, immediately after that with no space, we put an at symbol. And then finally, we type in the IP address that we are going to connect to. So we will we'll have sent this to you. So in my case, it's 35.176.219.60. So what this is going to say is that we're going to connect to this server as this user using this file to authenticate. If I press enter then, it will start the connection. Now, because I've never connected to this particular server before, I'll get a warning coming up saying that it can't be sure that this server can be trusted um, and asking me if I'm okay to proceed. Okay, so it'll only ask this the first time I make this connection and I will need to actually type in yes, Y-E-S, and then press return for, for the connection to actually start up. Because we've set up uh, our test server in a special way, rather than just seeing a normal login screen on the server, you'll see this little test program start up telling you that you've connected successfully. Um, it's useful for us to know who has been able to connect successfully. So it will then ask you to type in your name um, just so that we can then log who's managed to connect. So if I type my name in here and press uh, enter, It'll then say, thank you, you're all done, and press any key to log out. And when I press that, it will close this program and close the connection to the server and send me back to my desktop. Okay, so if I've gone through that process, I've now seen everything that I would need to see uh, to be able to be sure that I would be able to connect on the day, and you should be all set for the course. Okay, thank you.